Okay, okay, he's clearly a big deal. But then why is the finest knight in all the realm losing the war? Well, he's obviously... I mean, he... Shut up, Tobin. What's up guys, Stevie here with Lucky Crit. Today I wanted to take a look at and analyze all of the villager units in Fire Emblem Echoes and give you guys some ideas of which paths to take with these characters throughout your journey through Valentia. As a quick refresher, villagers will be able to promote into a handful of other classes starting at level 3. For the male villagers, they'll be able to reclass into mercenaries, soldiers, archers, cavaliers, and mages. For Fae, the female villager, she'll have access to cavalier, pegasus knight, cleric, and mage. This provides the player with a lot of options of how to build their early game team, and today we'll take a look at which options are generally considered to be the best for these characters based upon a combination of factors, including their bases and growth rates, usefulness, spell lists, and overall potential. The generally considered canon classes for these characters would be Grey as a mercenary, Tobin as an archer, Cliff as a mage, Fae as either a Pegasus Knight or a Cavalier, and Atlas as a Cavalier or a mercenary. But these classes are not always the best fits, so let's take a deeper look, starting with Grey. Grey is typically made into a mercenary because of his stat spread. Just about every other class is much too slow for him. Mercenary helps to patch up his speed and skill, and he has the best attack of the four villagers for it. He can also make a decent cavalier, but the cavalier class growth rates won't patch up his worse off stats as much as the mercenary class does, and you'll be getting some debatably better cavaliers later on, so your mileage may vary. As a mage, he'll probably have some decent attack, but his spell list is rather short when compared to the other villagers. And though I've seen some players saying they're planning on making him an archer, I think he's just much better suited for a more physically offensive role. Python will likely turn out better than he will as an archer, but since Alm doesn't really have access to an archer other than Python, and with their long range allowing them to stay back and not clutter up the front lines, perhaps it could be an option for you. Grey would also be decent as a soldier, since soldiers don't quite need speed as much, but on Alm's route you'll quickly get Lucas and then Forsyth early on in Chapter 1, who will both be as good or better than him as armor knights, so it's a bit redundant. Now we've got Tobin. Tobin's growths have improved significantly from those of his Gaiden counterpart, which is good news. In Gaiden, he suffered from the fact that his growths were mainly focused on skill and luck, as opposed to having good speed and strength, and because of this, no matter what class you made him, he ended up inferior to the other villagers. This time around, his attack and speed are slightly better, but he's still in sort of a weird niche spot. In the trailers for Fire Emblem Echoes, we've seen Tobin just about always as an archer. The archer class will definitely be a good fit for him, but he's got a few other options as well. Tobin works as an archer because of his great skill growth and average strength, so he'll definitely be hitting and doing some chip damage. His luck is higher than the other male villagers too, so this combination may lend to him critting more. His defense growth will also result in him being a bit more frail than the other male villagers, so the fact that he'll be attacking from far away as an archer and avoiding the front lines will also work well. Some believe he's more useful in the mage class though, due to his really useful spell list. While his available spells as a mage are far fewer than Cliff, he gets access to Excalibur much faster, and his attack speed early on will be much better than Cliff's. With his decent base speed, he has the highest attack speed with Fire, which lets him double a lot earlier and snowballs into his really early Excalibur spell that he'll learn at level 6. Later on, he'll have some nice Physic heals as a Sage, too. He'll also make a decent Cavalier, but his speed advantage with his starting base of 6 will be wasted slightly, as the other two options suit him a bit better. Next up, we've got Cliff. Because everyone's growths have been buffed up a bit in Echoes, and Cliff's growths now fall on the lower end of the scale, even receiving a 15% HP growth nerf, Cliff isn't in the best spot anymore like he was in Gaiden. Most people opt to make him into a mage, and that seems to be the generally accepted canon class for him, but it's not without its faults. His attack speed as a mage is really bad for a while until he gets Excalibur, which he now learns two levels later than in Gaiden, and that's now three levels later than Tobin does. In Gaiden, Cliff was considered superior to Luthier as a mage. He had access to the same spells as Luthier, plus Aura, and superior growths, except for Luck, but he starts with 10 Luck, so it wasn't a big deal. His spell list is also pretty much twice as long as the other male villagers, so that's pretty enticing, but he'll need a good amount of investment to be great. With the increase of enemy stats on hard mode, his horrible initial attack speed as a mage, archer, and soldier is much more apparent and problematic though. Unfortunately, in the two classes that do fix his attack speed, Cavalier and Mercenary, He's typically seen as outclassed by the other villagers and other units in the army. Mercenary generally works well for everybody, but Grey stat spread is far better for it, and there's only so much Leaven Sword to pass around between units. You'll also get both Zeke and Matilda later on on Alm's route, who are generally considered better cavaliers, and there's also Clive the Cavalier early on, who's decent enough. 
Cliff can make soldier work well, but it comes at the cost of him being fairly mediocre for a while until promotion to Armor Knight. He would likely end up better than Lucas, but he starts behind in levels, and if he doesn't promote at the Deliverance HQ, then it'll be pretty bad. As an archer, assuming you don't care about the fact that he'll struggle doubling in Chapter 1, and you're only focusing on his later game performance, long term could be really good. Forges will make up for any strength issues he has, and his speed will be great. At the very least, the long range chip damage will be nice. Next is Faye. As the first ever female villager in Gaiden and Echoes, Faye has some interesting choices. She's the only villager without access to the Archer, Soldier, and Mercenary classes, since they're male only, even though in Fire Emblem Heroes they decided to make her an Archer, but that's a story for a different day. Instead, she gets access to the Pegasus Knight and Cleric classes. As a Pegasus Knight, she'll have the best speed out of all of her options, as well as great movement and flight. You do get Claire though, and when comparing her to Claire, Claire has a much better speed growth at 70%. Faye's attack speed later in the game might be hindered by some of the more powerful weapons, which won't really phase Claire as much. If Faye can get some good level ups focusing on strength and bulk though, she can be good too. Faye as a Cavalier has fairly good bases, and her stats overall will be pretty good, but her speed will likely come up short as the game progresses. Pegasus Knight Faye seems better than Cavalier Faye, since it patches up her speed to 7 upon promotion, too. Comparing her with the other Villager Cavaliers and the actual Cavaliers, she ends up a bit near the bottom in terms of how good she'll be in this class. If you can get her to promote to Paladin before getting Clive in your army, she might be worth it, but otherwise she'll be about on par with him. Cavalier Faye will have a base attack of 9 and 5 base speed, which is alright, but she gets outclassed by Matilda, who you'll get later on. Thankfully, in Echoes, it'll be much easier to train healers compared to how it was in Gaiden, and the Cleric class is definitely one to consider for Faye. As a Cleric, she'll have access to Physic, Rescue, and Again, which will be very useful. She'll learn Physic at level 6, Rescue at level 10, and Again as a level 14 Saint. Physic is good since the only other users in the route are Tobin, who gets it as a level 5 Sage, and Tatiana, who joins fairly late. Rescue is also very useful, and she's the only unit with access to it on Alm's route, and potentially the game itself, depending on what you do with the villager Atlas on Celica's route. She also gets access to Again, which can make her basically the dancer of your army, able to have your other units act again after moving that turn, but it comes very late. Her good strength will also make for better heals and better ranges with the ranged spells. She's also another healer that would be helpful on Alm's route, since the only other healer you'll have for a majority of the game will be Silk. Bulk is an issue here, though a shield can mitigate that to an extent. Faye would be good as a mage too, but ultimately not that great due to her not being able to learn Excalibur. She does learn Angel though, which will be good in dungeons against terrors. She is also effectively the only unit in the game who learns the Freeze spell as a level 6 priestess. Freeze is a good spell, and because of her good magic attack, its range won't be as bad as usual. Without Excalibur later on though, she'll be a middle of the road mage at best. In terms of the healers, Silk has Warp, Tatiana has Fortify, and Faye has Rescue. All of these spells are very good niches for them on top of the heals, so definitely be sure to keep track of that for your army. And finally, there's Atlas. Atlas is in a weird place. He's the only villager unit recruitable on Celica's journey, unless very early on in the game you choose not to recruit certain units like Fey with Alm. This is kind of a weird easter egg we'll talk about in another episode. Atlas comes as a villager relatively late, when all of your units come in their first tier classes, and his growths are a bit one-sided. All of his growths are low, except for strength and HP, so ideally we'd want to pick a class that would help alleviate his poor skill, speed, and defense. Celica doesn't get any early game Cavaliers on her route, which is interesting, so many have advocated making him a Cavalier to fill that void. Unfortunately though, the Cavalier class growths don't really help to fix any of his bad areas. The large amount of movement and his good attack could help him to travel far and deal a decent amount of damage in a pinch though. Mercenary will likely be the best route for him and would help patch up his speed and skill, However, Celica's route already has a bunch of mercenaries, like Saber, Kamui, Jesse, and potentially Dean, and I've seen a lot of people that would argue that some of those are better units than Atlas, so it's still a tough spot for him. Atlas is also okay as an archer, but he probably won't be hitting much of the time. He'd have 3 skill at level 10, and bows have an even lower hit rate than they did in Gaiden. When he does hit though, he'll hit hard because of his good strength, so he'll definitely inflict some decent chip damage against bulkier enemies like Draco Zombies. The fact that he won't be right next to them in combat will be helpful too. Mage could also work well for him, since he doesn't have to be in close quarters, and magic accuracy is set, so his hit rate won't be poor like in the Archer class. But Celica gets a bunch of other stronger mages, so once again it's a tough choice to make. As a mage, his spell selection is actually quite interesting, and opens up a lot of options though. He gets access to Rescue with its huge range, and his damage and healing spells will be powerful because of his high attack stat. His large amount of HP will also come in handy with the spell cost. 
It would also be pretty funny to have one of the burliest units in the game take the role of a usually physically frail mage. He doesn't get Excalibur, which stinks, but he's the only unit on Celica's route to get access to the rescue spell, and unless you made Fey a cleric, he'll be your only other shot of having access to this spell in your playthrough. Since magic has fixed hit rates, and his attack will be naturally high, all he would need is a strong shield, like the Dragon Shield, to be a tank that deals a lot of damage. Alternatively, the Speed Ring can be used to make him faster, and technically this could help him in some of these other classes too. As a soldier, Atlas's defense issues are mended, and he's got some nice tank potential with his HP and strength growths, but the low speed and skill growths that aren't addressed by the soldier class are not going to treat him all that well. So in summary, the best options would be Grey as a mercenary or cavalier, Tobin as an archer or mage, Cliff as a mage, cavalier, or soldier, Faye should be a pegasus knight or a cleric, and Atlas should be a mercenary, cavalier, archer, or mage. Hopefully you found the information in this episode helpful. If you did, be sure to slash the thumbs up and also comment echoes in the comment section down below. I'd also love to know what your plans are for these characters in your playthrough, and if there are any classes you disagree with me on, so be sure to let me know in the comments. Also be sure to get subscribed if you haven't already to stay up to date on our content, and be sure to follow us on Twitter for updates and news on the fly. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.